The New Hampshire presidential primary, first in the nation, is held every four years to choose delegates to the Democratic and Republican national conventions where nominees for U.S. president are selected. This year's primary was like no other. I'm Jenny Johnson for Comcast Newsmakers at the New Hampshire Institute of Politics at St. Anselm College. Political analyst and commentator James Demers, president of Demers and Blaisdell, joins Newsmakers. Welcome to the program, Jim. Thanks. Good to be here. Thank you for being here. So now, the New Hampshire primary was very unique, to say the least, That's this year. For sure. So what was your reaction? Um, well, the outcome ended up being pretty close to what the polls were showing, even though a lot of people thought the polls were way off, you know, a week before. But Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders ended up pulling their surprise victories and moving on. And uh, I have to tell you, I've never seen a primary like this one. Um, clearly, voter anger drove the outcome. And, um, you know, the one thing I observed was the more Donald Trump hit the anger button, mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders did better as well. And so the voters really kind of came out and voted more their emotion this time than their head. Okay, so emotion would be one difference, I would say, than yeah. the past. But give us a sense of how this has been different than in the past. Well, I think we've continued to see that grassroots is playing a bigger and bigger part. You know, 10 years ago, grassroots was virtually gone, and the candidates would just have to raise as much money as possible and then advertise. And all of the campaigns had door knockers uh, to get their vote out, telephone calls. Um, but probably the biggest difference in this from previous is that this was the first uh, challenged presidential race where Citizens United uh, played a part. And so we had a lot of outside money that was spending on behalf of candidates um, that we didn't have in the past. And so we saw a lot of negative ads. The one thing I learned is when an ad started mm -hmm. with the disclaimer, paid for by, you knew that ad was going to be a doozy. Um, <laughs> but when they end with that disclaimer, it was usually kind of a nice ad. And this might have been one of the most negative um, elections we've ever seen because the candidates were just pounding each other, particularly on the Republican side. All right, so let's talk a little bit about your history and your experience with the primaries. I go all the way back to Edmund Muskie uh, from Maine when he ran, and I was just a young kid. Um, and my mother was quite surprised when I went to her one day and said, I would like to go down and work on a presidential campaign. And she loaded me in the car and took me down as a little boy. And I remember back then it was all hand addressing envelopes and three by five cards. And that's how I got started. And I can really say that, you know, I wouldn't be in politics today if it had not been for the presidential primary in New Hampshire. Okay, so from Muskie all the way to now 2016. So what changes have you seen in campaign strategies? Well, social media is the big radical change of the past uh, decade. That um, particularly as it relates to young people, that's how you connect with them. So the campaigns that had great digital and social media campaigns were able to drive message to, to younger voters. And I think if you look at Bernie Sanders' campaign, that aspect paid off quite a bit. All right, so this was the 100th year of the New Hampshire primary, yeah. big year. So will the results of this year's primary impact the future of the first primary? Well, there are some people that think that um, the two people who won the nominations here um, were not the people that the parties wanted. So, you know, every once in a while we go through this threat that somebody wants to take away New Hampshire's first in the nation primary status. The Republican chairman, national chairman, has already said that he's not a big fan of starting the process in New Hampshire. So once this one's over and once the election's over in November, I think we're going to see that whole issue reopen again, and we're going to be fighting to keep the primary here. Okay, so we do have a long time between now and November. So do you have any thoughts about how the rest of this process will play out? This is going to go for a while. Um, you know, my sense is that Donald Trump is in a very strong position. And if the field doesn't winnow down uh, rather quickly, Donald Trump's going to be on his way to winning the nomination. But I do expect, just like we saw... Uh, after New Hampshire, a couple of candidates dropped out. More will drop out as time goes on. And so this will become eventually a one-on-one -on -one race against mm -hmm. somebody. Um, and I think, you know, Bernie Sanders has demonstrated that we are going to see the Democratic race go on for several weeks before we have a, 
a nominee on both sides. All right. Well, Jim, thanks for sharing your insights with us today. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for watching Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Jenny Johnson.